All right. So I have this. Can I do Pythagoras? No. Why not? I only have one side, so I better find the other side. Yes? What finds the other side? Tan. If I write it out, is it possible to do trig wrong? It is absolutely impossible. Tan of theta equals opposite over adjacent. Tan, what is theta? 30, 30. Theta equals 30. So I write 30 there. Opposite is x. Adjacent is 24. What math do I do to get x by itself? Multiply both sides by 24. 24 tan 30 equals x. Now here is where you need to be. You have to depart from my teaching because I do not know what calculator you have. I do not know the way that you do that part of this question. Who does need to know that? You do. I have shown you both ways for both calculators. You need to do the one that applies to you. And when you do that work, you find that x equals 12.12. .12. Actually, you find out it is a whole bunch of decimals. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's from another question. I've done so much math today. It's in my head. I haven't done the math. It is, yes, it is 13.86, did you say? It's 8.56. So it's 8.6. Now, okay, if you do not have 13.86 showing on your calculator screen right now, your calculator is in the wrong mode. What must have been on the screen? A D or a DEG? If that is not on the screen, you're in the wrong mode. I also told you how to fix that. I don't know how your calculator fixes it. You're supposed to be able to fix it. Is everybody good? Now, listen to me, please. All of you should be looking at your calculator. A whole string of numbers, yes? Yeah. We don't want to write that down. Why did I write it down this way? Just so if I do clear my calculator, I have it still there. But you know that you're going to use this whole string of numbers again, aren't you? Because you're about to do Pythagoras, yes? Yeah. And you already have 13.8856, blah, 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 on your machine, yes? What are you going to do to do Pythagoras? Well, you know it's x squared plus 24 squared equals y squared, yes? You've already got x on your screen. It's sitting right there. So just hit the squared button that looks like this, x with a little 2 over it. No, don't hit the one with the three over it, Ethan. That's cubing. Hit the one with the two over it. And then add 24 squared and then push equals. And that's going to get you, I believe, I can't remember. 27.7 when you square root at the end. Yes. It's going to get you a giant number. Great. 768. Now, you guys aren't stupid. You would never say, if I walk 24 that way and 13 that way, I've walked 768 that way. Even if you don't understand Pythagoras, you know that makes no sense. So, of course, you would square root that answer and get 27.71. Right? Right. Now I got three more. You're going to do these, and then you're going to do some work with trig completely on your own doing actual uh, problems, using your knowledge and applying it to a situation. So let's talk about these three things first. Actually, there's one other thing we have to talk about, page 56. We'll get to that in a minute. We're going to do this first. Remember, all of it is the same thing. One, is there an angle that I'm interested in in this question? Yes, it is right there. What does X mean? It's unknown, yes? So since that's the angle I'm interested in, theta is an unknown. What do I have? I have that side, which is opposite. So what's my O? 35. I have that side, which is what? Adjacent. My adjacent is 50. Write out what you have. Tan theta, I know it's lagging, it'll catch up, equals O over A. Now write it all out. 
tan of x equals O, 35 over A, 50. What math is that? Division, that's going to give you a decimal, isn't it? When you have the decimal and you need the angle, is it tan or shift tan? Shift tan. Shift tan of x equals, and then go ahead and put it in brackets. Bracket 35 divided by 50. Close brackets. Depending on your calculator, you got to know how to enter that. I can't know that for you. But it's 35 divided by 50, which gives you 34.99999. What do we do with angles? Uh, round, up, round, to the nearest. round to the nearest whole number because angles aren't measured in decimals. Is everybody good? Is everyone good? Choose the angle, fill in the chart, do the math, calculator does the work. All right, so does anything change with the middle one? Do I have an, step one is always decide on your angle. Do you have one that you are interested in? Of course, when I say this, somebody in my first class, you know, there's wise ass in every class. I'm not interested in any of this. I know that, that's fine, okay? I get that. I do the jokes here. Is there an angle here? Tomorrow is Dad Joke Thursday. I hope you've been stockpiling. What's theta? 60. Once you have theta set up, set up everything else. Do you have an O? No, that's unknown. Do you have an A? Yes, that's 7. Do you have anything else that's unknown? The hypotenuse, which is Y. So I'm going to have to do the hypotenuse last. Why? Damn it, I hope somebody would make, because it's the letter Y. Why? Why? Anyway, why am I going to have to do the hypotenuse last? Because you have to find the third side. Why do you do this? The second side. Don't ask me about your X. That's my favorite math joke. Algebra, stop asking about your X. I don't know how to find her. She's gone, and I don't know why. But I do have to pee. Oh, there's a cue for the lot for the bathroom. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. Ah, screw it. Why so serious? <laughs> All right. Why so, what do I know? <laughs> Tan theta equals O over A. Write it out. You can't do it wrong. Tan of what? Sixty equals X over seven. Numbers on the bottom, what math do you do? Seven times tan 60. Where do you get the number for tan 60? Do you know it in your head? No, what does? Incubators hatch eggs. Calculator. How do you punch that into your machine? I don't know, you do. Do it. There's 12.12. I knew it was coming. I don't know how to do this because I wasn't here. So why aren't you paying attention to have your calculator out and you're practicing it right now? Yeah, because you're using your phone, which is a pain in the rear. Get a calculator. But do you have an iPhone? Is that an iPhone? It's an Android? Okay. So punch in what I tell you to punch in. And if you get the right answer, you're going to get it right. Clear your phone right now. Push seven times 60 tan equals. Okay. When I put it in tan, it has the black. 
It writes tan. Okay. Great. Now push seven times tan sixty. Close bracket equals. Now, now we know you're in radians mode. So change it to degrees. Find a calcul a button on there that has DRG on it or that says radian. Meanwhile, everybody else, take that 12.12 .12 and find out what Y is. Go. How are you going to find what Y is? Yeah, I'm old, dude. Come on. So, seven. iPhone, there should be a square root button. Turn it sideways. Turn it sideways. The one with the little two. Yeah, that's right. 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 Yeah, here. All right. What was the answer? 14. I think it's 14. Excellent. And the last question. What's the angle? Theta equals 80. What do you know? Opposite is 10. Adjacent is X. If you write it out, you can't do it wrong. Put them on the floor, man. They'll make room. We're letting Liam, or Liam put his, what are those things called? <laughs> Crutches, thank you. Can you, do you know what to do here? Yes. You do, because tan theta is O over A. You can't do it wrong if you write it out. Tan of 80 equals 10 over x. What are you going to do when the x is on the bottom? Divide. Tan 80 equals 10 over x. So x equals 10 divided by tan 80. Now, remember, when you're dividing by tan 80, you got to do it right. If you have a backwards calculator, if you enter this as 10 divided by 80 tan, as soon as you hit that tan button on a backwards calculator, your screen's going to fill up. But are you done? Have you told your calculator yet that you want an answer? You got to hit equals. And what is the answer? Don't you have a forward calculator? So why would you push 80 tan? You need to push tan 80. What is it? 1.76 or something? 1.76. OK, remember, let's pretend that for some unknown crazy reason, your calculator doesn't work on test day. And you only write that out. Do I give you full marks? 
Of course I give you full marks. That's the work. This is your calculator. I can teach my daughter to do trig on a calculator because all it is is push buttons. She doesn't know what's going on. If I told her, hey, Beth, push one, zero, divided by the button that says tan, eight, zero, then equals, would she get the right answer? Is she doing trig? No, she's pushing buttons. Where is the trig? This. Damn it, that would have been so much more dramatic if it worked. There's supposed to be a big yellow box around the important stuff. And it's blue. <laughs> That's the important stuff. Are you racist against blue people? Yes. <laughs> I am. All right. Everybody cool. All right. Now, turn on to page 56. Because as we just proved with this test, if I tell you to find me the surface area of a rectangular prism, no problem. If I tell you to find the surface area of a building, I don't know. So we're going to talk about the difference between trig and angles on a piece of paper and how they work in real life. Okay? okay. All right. Piece of paper has how many dimensions? Two. Real life has how many dimensions? Multiple. Yes? All right. Watch. Here is a very handsome math teacher. Not you. So it's not you? That is some fake glasses. This looks old. I didn't know glasses. All right. On a piece of paper, the only direction that you could draw for where my eyes look is what direction right now? I would have to draw this way. Does everyone agree? Now, in reality, my eyes can look in a straight line in an infinite amount of directions, can't they? Everybody agree? Right now, I'm looking in 30 different directions. Everyone cool? But on the piece of paper, I have to identify where my eyes start as a flat line, because that's the only way I can do it. Everybody good? All right, now, let's pretend that Kingston is at the back of the room messing around, and he has a bottle rocket. And he fires the bottle rocket towards the ceiling. He would never fire it a person, because that's really irresponsible. He fires it towards the ceiling, and what happens? No. It goes up there and goes, bang! What will my eyes do? Look up. So, Kingston fires the bottle rocket up. There's a big explosion. Bang! And my eyes look up. What did they just make? No, they did not make a triangle. They made an angle. They made a theta in there. Yes? Now, if I were to tell you that Kingston's bottle rocket went up seven meters, could we now do some trig? Yeah. In the real world, is there a highlighter colored yellow line up to where the explosion was, a highlighter colored green line right towards Kingston? No, I do not have laser eyes. Freaking laser beam eyes. I don't have them. But I, you all see this angle, yes? Which direction did my eyes start in? Horizontal, diagonally, or vertical? Horizontal. So that's where they started. Where did they go? What direction? Up. When an angle goes up from the horizontal, you have what is called, and I'm going to wait a second before my computer wakes up so it works as I am writing it. You have what we call an, you have what we call an, you have what we call an angle of elevation or an angle of inclination. Both are the same thing.
because my eyes are starting flat and going up. Is everybody with me? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, now that Kingston has got my attention up in the sky, he pulls out of his pocket a mighty mite, which probably means nothing to any of you guys. But when I was a kid, they were little firecrackers. They were the cheapest ones you could get. They just go, bam! No, no, no. Those are snap caps. Those are different. Firecrackers are actually light. Okay? You would never have them because all of you are good kids and firecrackers are illegal. But I was a badass. So, I light a firecracker and I drop it on the ground. What happened? Or Kingsland lights a firecracker and drops it on the ground. What happens? There's a big bang down here. Bang! And I look at the ground. If I told you Kingston was one meter off the ground, do I now have a triangle? Could I now do trig? Yes. This angle in here is my theta, and I looked downwards. So it is what is called an angle of depression. Or declination. Okay, is everybody with me? What? No. Now, now, we're going to draw another small picture. On this picture, we're going to have person on the ground. Hello. And person in a plane. Hello. You guys all know that any time a plane goes over, everybody looks. Doesn't matter what kind of plane it is. Doesn't matter what's going on. Everybody's like, at some, if you're not actually doing something else, you look up at the plane. We all do it. Every single person. Don't lie and say you don't. We all do. I've refed rugby games. I've seen the one guy with the ball and the one guy about to tackle him not looking up. All other 28 players on the field. Oh, 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 plane. <laughs> hey, wonder where it's going. Maybe it's going to Hawaii. I'd like to go to Hawaii. Oh, the ball. You all do it. If it's one of those little tiny planes, you think, oh, I would never ride in one of those. Or you think, man, I'd like to get my pilot's license. Or, Mo, maybe I want to go skydiving. You all do it, so don't lie and say you don't. So, I'm going to draw a red triangle between the plane in the air, which is flying in the air at a certain level above the ground, the ground, and my line of sight up to the plane. It is a crazy tall person. All right? Now, we know we don't care about the 90 degree angle, yes? Well, the 90 degree angle doesn't get a name. It's just, it already has a name. It doesn't get two, Ash. Don't be greedy. The right angle is 90 degrees. It's the right angle. It gets a name. Now, what is, now, wait, there's a pilot up there. Right? The pilot looks down on the ground and looks at all the people on the ground and says, I wonder what those guys are doing. I know this because I've been in planes. And when you fly over a city, you look down and you see everybody's houses and, oh, look, there's a field. They're playing car. They're playing a rugby game. Or, oh, look, there's a swimming pool. Maybe someone's swimming in it. You look down. Right? Right? So the pilot, the pilot, what? The pilot should be looking forward. Yes? But he notices this handsome fellow on the ground and looks down. Now, I'm going to put four letters on here. A, B, C, and D. Now, I want, when those letters show up, I want you to answer two questions for me. Everybody ready? All right. What letter represents an angle of elevation? You've got the drawing right above you, people. What is an angle of elevation? B is the only angle of elevation. Now, what letter represents 
an angle of depression. D, and only D. Why is this not an angle of depression? Because we didn't start at horizontal. Why is this not an angle of elevation? Because we didn't start at horizontal. But what do you know about the value of this angle of depression and this angle of elevation? They're the same. Okay. Everybody good? Sweet. Take a minute. Talk to your neighbor. Have your stretch. Do what you need to do. And in two minutes, we're coming back for more trig. What did I say? You've already used 25 of your two minutes. You speak English, and yet I just said, go do what you need to do, and he still asked. Listen up. We have covered up and down, yes? Those are angles in the real world. But we also do angles in the real world in another way. Left and right. Exactly. But we don't use left and right. Mm, getting warmer. They do have to do with directions. Keep talking while my computer thaws. East, west, south, east, west. There you go. North, south, east, and west. We also deal with north, south, east. East and West. Now, how do we show North, South, East, and West on a piece of paper that does not necessarily point North, South, East, and West? We use what's called the compass rose, yes? And what's at the top? North. Even though that is not North, on a map, no matter how I hold it, North is at the top. We have just decided that. Not very fair for people that live in the South. But so it goes. No, it isn't. North is that way. Huh? Never eat soggy hey, never eat soggy wieners. That's what I say too. Never eat soggy wieners. Never eat. Never eat. There's lots of, lots of them. Anyway. Now, there's two ways we deal with this. One of them is called heading. Headings are given as a value from 0 to 360. Why? Why is a heading only a number between 0 and 360? I haven't told you. I'm asking you to figure it out. Eric. Because it's degrees. Damn skippy. It's a circle. Excellent. Where do you think 0 lives? Actually, technically, it's only 360. No, it's 359 minutes. 359 degrees, 59 minutes, and 59 seconds. Did we? Oh, okay. Well, that's part of what we need to do. So where does zero start? At north. If z north is zero degrees, what's east? 90. It's a 90 degree corner. What's south? 180. And what's west? 270. Yeah. All right. Now, if I were to tell you I was going to take a walk at a heading of 57 degrees, I would be going off in that direction. Yes. Where do I start counting from? Straight north. So what is this? How far is that? That's where the 57 lives. Cool? Everybody good? Now, if I'm going to do trig, I would need to make a triangle, yes? And I would have a 57 right there. Everybody good? Now, sometimes you got to do trig with this half of the triangle. 
If this is 57, what's this? 90 minus 57, which is? 33 degrees. Is everybody good? Everybody? Okay. Now, I want you to tell me where I would be walking if I walked off at a heading of 294 degrees. I would be going off over here in this quadrant. Yes? All right. And you've heard this in the movies, right? Where, where's the boat? Oh, it's got, it was going on a heading of blah, blah, blah. This is it. This is what they mean. So I'm going off on a heading of 294, so I'm walking this way, right? If I want to do trig, what do I need? I need a triangle. So I either need this triangle or I need this triangle, yes? What is this angle right here? All the way around is 294. What's this part? 24. Why, Eric? 2, not all, there's 270, I need to go 24 more. So what is this part? 66. 66. Does everybody understand headings? Yes. Okay, it's not super important right now, but it's going to become more so. The only other trick you need to remember is what happens right here if I change direction. If I don't keep walking on that green line, right here I change direction, I got to draw a new one of these and do it again. Everybody cool? All right. That is headings. Real life use of angles. Everybody good? Okay. There's another way we do directions, and that is called bearings. And you've heard that in English too. I got to get my bearings. That's your situation where you are you start it the same way north east south west but you read them differently a bearing is given as this a direction to start then a degree of adjustment and then a direction of adjustment okay so I'll, you'll see what I mean direction to start a degree of adjustment and a direction of adjustment so somebody choose a direction great we're going to start east somebody give me a number between 0 and 90 23 and now somebody say north or south. South. Okay. So this is read as e 20, east 20 south. So this is how it works. The direction we were to start in was east. So if I made no adjustments, I would be walking straight out here. Is everybody cool? But I made an adjustment of 20 degrees in what direction? So where is that, up or down? down so I went down 20 that's the direction I walked on everybody cool if that's 20 what's that 70 everybody good all right now I'm going to give you another one you try to draw it in there and then do the angles okay I am going to walk north 32 west where would that line be where do I start? Where do I, how far do I adjust? And in what direction? I am not trying to rush anyone. I just want to see, do I need to give you a little bit more time? Or has everybody at least attempted? Okay. Where do I start? North. But I didn't really walk north, did I? I adjusted 32 degrees. Which direction? Left or right? Left. So this is the direction I walked. Where's the 32? 
right in there. So what's this? 58. So now I could do trig if I needed to. Is everybody cool with the way we use angles in the real world? Okay. For your work tonight, the only part of this you need is the angle of elevation and declination. Okay, just that one. Everybody good? All right, now. Uh, well, I told that hernia story, so we lost a little bit of time. Um, I was hoping to give you 20 minutes to work, but I'm only going to be able to give you uh, about 10 for page 57. Now, please notice what is on the bottom of page 57? The answers. So check your work. Okay. Now, everybody in the other class had to ask me about question 10. Please notice, it explains itself. Oh, oh, 11. If a hill goes up 20 and along here 100, then what's the tan there? Opposite over adjacent. 20 over 100, yes? And 20 over 100 is 20%. I want you to do that question four times. One with 20, 25. So what's the up and down going to be? 25. And over what? 100, because it's a percent. So there's your tan, opposite over adjacent. What's this one going to be? 10 over 100. What's this one going to be? 15 over 100. And again, Real life situation. You guys don't know it yet because you don't drive. But if you have driven on any mountains, mountain roads, you see the yellow signs on the side that say 8%. That's what they mean. That means for every 100 meters you go, if you were to go straight instead of down the hill, you're going to go down 8 meters. That's pretty steep. Okay, you won't find a road with much more than a 20 degree. That would be the steepest road that we would build on in Canada that I know of. And it happens to be up by Williams Lake. If you have ever driven from Williams Lake to Bella Coola, you have driven down a 20 degree hill. And it is frightening. Yes, and it is frightening. It is not just frightening. No, no, no. It's frightening. Okay? Go. There's somebody at my door awaiting my attention. Um, we'll go over your test tomorrow. You can all see what you got on Check My Mark. It's already up there. Tomorrow I'll give them back and we'll go over. Now, if you haven't written that test, and I can't remember who in here has in a couple of people, if you haven't written it, two things have to happen. One, you got to come and find me to write it. Okay? Two, that's your gift. From now on, if you miss a test, if you want to write it, you need to bring in a note from mommy, daddy, grandma, grandpa, auntie, uncle, pet rock, whoever is in charge of you, to prove to me that they know you missed the test day and you were not skipping. Uh, it's a joke. The point is I need documentation from one from your family member if you miss a test. Because you all know well in advance of when those tests are. So unless you're actually sick, you should be here. And if you're actually sick, your mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, auntie, uncle won't mind writing you a note. 
or sending me an email. It is the 21st century. I don't need a note note. Huh? Can I send a letter to your house? If you wish. Since we are not going over the test till tomorrow, tomorrow at lunch would be a real good time for those people that haven't written it yet. That sounds like a really smart idea. I don't know why I would do that. It's almost like I've done this before. And yes, if you cannot wait 20 minutes, you may check your check my mark score right now. I know a bunch of you already have. I really don't know how I will say, if I'm not mistaken, there are two people in this room that have better than 100% right now. So, That's a thing. It's not a real thing, but I'm willing to make it happen. There was a bonus question on the test. It was slightly over a million dollars. Yes. Unless you're Ash, and then it's not a million dollars. Is it Ash? 800,000 for Ash, because she thinks dimes are worth five cents. Remind me to open a store and only let Ash shop there. Oh, I got 300 dimes. Well, oh, that's a uh, fifty that's there, uh, Ash. Oh, I just screwed that up. 300 dimes would be $15. Sorry. I didn't divide by enough. 300 dimes would be 3,000 cents, which would be, that's okay, which would be $30. But according to Ash, they're only worth a nickel, so 300 dimes would be only worth $15. But Ash knows how much a dime is. She was just under pressure. The test was stressing her out because, you know, it was a really tough test because I didn't give you all the formulas. And I didn't give you drawings of everything. I know, right? And, and, and I didn't give videos for everything. And I didn't give you two quizzes that had all the multiple choice questions on them already. So if you studied your quizzes, you automatically got eight free marks. <laughs>